Great work in completing module one and welcome to module two. Now you are familiar with the theory and the process of AHP and understand how it has been used. We will share with you some practical insights and tips on how to use AHP to design and conduct your own research, drawing on our experiences of using AHP in Ghana, Zambia, and New Zealand. In this first video of the module, I will provide a brief overview of some general issues to consider in designing your research approach using AHP. Professor Ranwick will then guide you through some most important practical issues in the following videos. Reviews of AHP applications and our own experiences of using AHP all tell us that engaging decision makers in the AHP process through participatory approach is very important, no matter what your research objectives may be. To prepare a good participatory approach, it's important that you do some desk research and prep work first, so you can have a well-structured approach that will effectively engage stakeholders to achieve your research objectives. Some essential topics to consider for your desk research and prep work include first, identifying criteria or also referred to as domains based on existing literature. Clearly defined criteria or domains will help you structure your engagement with key stakeholders. At domain level, you may want to consider using widely used or well-known frameworks. For example, established sustainability framework that looks at social, economic, environmental issues, or well-known policy or guidelines on land uses that list key issues to consider. This way, the domains can be broad enough to accommodate different stakeholders' views, but at the same time clear enough so the stakeholders you engage with in your interviews can understand and relate to the domains easily. You can find examples in reading materials provided and you should also watch video two in this module for more details. Also just to note that if you're using HP to investigate drivers of land use decisions, you should definitely engage land use decision makers to identify the sub criteria or also refer to as sub domains. The research approach I mentioned in the earlier module as part of Sentinel project is a good example. But if you're using HP to assist decision making, you may want to consider try to pre-select and define your subdomains through desk research and or engaging with key stakeholders and experts. The New Zealand approach Professor Ranwick introduced in module one is a good example here. In addition to the domains, you also need to identify and gain basic understanding of the stakeholders and the land use decision makers you would want to engage in the process. For example, the current size of land they manage, the current land use, whether stakeholders make land use decisions as a group or individual. Such basic understanding can help you identify the right stakeholders, tailor your interview questions, and it will also help you decide how to best structure interviews. For example, if land use decisions are normally made in a group, then you may want to consider interviewing those stakeholders as a group so you can observe and understand the group decision dynamics. Video four under this module will provide more guidance on how to best engage individuals versus groups. After you have done your preparation, when you start your interviews using HP, you may also want to consider a few other key issues. First, be very clear of your research objectives as well as your budget and timeline so you can choose the best approach that suits you. For example, if you are constrained on time and resources and aims to only understand trade-offs rather than supporting decision-making, then you may want to consider only doing pairwise comparisons at domain level and investigate what are the subdomains without necessarily doing the pairwise comparison as we did in the Sentinel project. Secondly, start with general questions to warm up the interviewees. For example, start with questions that are easier for them to answer and can help you understand their land and land use better. For example, very simple questions like how many years they have been managing their land. Then you can move on to general questions to understand key criteria they consider when making land use decisions. For example, if you're trying to understand land expansion decisions, start with general questions like, what are the key issues you considered when you decide how much and where to expand your land? Those general questions are not only easier for interviewees to answer and engage with, 
they will also give you an opportunity to get some concrete tailored examples to help your interviewees do pairwise comparison later. It's also useful to note that not all stakeholders will understand the concept of trade-offs. So design your question to accommodate that. Concrete examples based on their answers to the general questions will help you come up with examples that they can relate to. And the pairwise comparison will also help prompt stakeholders to think through the relative importance of different land use objectives. Therefore, review relevant insights on how they manage trade-offs without necessarily using the term trade-off. But don't get too fixated on only getting quantitative data through pairwise comparison. Build in questions to understand the stories and the rationales from your interviewees on why they gave more importance to one issue comparing to the other and how they assign the weight the pairwise comparison can really help stimulate this type of discussions, which can provide qualitative information about how land users manage trade-offs. You can fully take advantage of HP strong points as outlined in module one and use radar graphics that can be generated through pairwise comparison to engage stakeholders and encourage them to give you more information and have more in-depth discussion about trade-offs. Later in this module, you will learn about how to use an Excel tool to structure such participatory approach in New Zealand. Another useful tip is to do trial run with people you're familiar with to test out your interview questions and approach first. This can help you improve and perfect your interview approach. Also, you will likely have a lengthy discussion with key stakeholders through using HP. So it is useful to consider ways to record your interview result effectively so you can capture all the important discussions and the rich, rich information you may get from them. For example, you could try to tape record the interview if it's agreeable with your interviewees, or you may want to prepare a standard interview recording sheet so you can start summarizing interview responses in a standard format already that can allow easy comparison amongst interviewees later when you try to analyze the data. And always ensure that you cover all key important aspects of your research. And this type of standard interview recording sheet can really help that. Last but not least, it will also help if you can consider building ways to allow your interviewees to provide feedback after interview. You will learn an example of how to do so later in this module. I hope some of the general tips are useful to you. In the rest of the module, Professor Ranwick will guide you through some most important and practical issues to consider when using HP, including how to select and refine criteria and sub-criteria, how to use Excel-based tools for HP, and how to design participatory approach. See you there.